there's a classic video game called Star Fox, um, and there's this kind of bunny rabbit. I think he's a bunny rabbit. His name is Peppy, and in the game, he commands you to do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Uh, and and that's what this lesson is about. Uh, when, you know, when you're flying in an airplane and you kind of like bank like Star Fox does, right? And he kind of tilts like this. Um, the idea is, is that the path that you're moving on would be doing some kind of twisting. And, and that's what we're here to define, how much twisting is happening in a curve. done my best to draw uh, this biplane. <clears throat> and here we go. Uh, we're going to use the letter tau, the Greek letter tau. It kind of looks like a letter T, except usually we use T for time. So I can't use T for torsion. So I'm going to use tau. Um, and here, th so this airplane is flying in this direction. So there's the unit tangent vector. And then uh, the unit binormal vector is going to come right up out of the top of the page. And now, because, um, because this airplane has kind of twisted along its path, now the unit binormal vector has changed. So just right off the bat from the setup, we can tell already that somehow the torsion must be related to how much um, the binormal vector is changing. So here's the different ways that uh, airplanes can move. The first one is pitch. That's not what we're here to talk about. That's like nosing up and nosing down. The next one is roll. That's when the airplane, its wings go up or down like this. That, that one, that's what we are here to talk about. That's what torsion is affected by. And the last one is yaw. That's where the, the airplane just kind of like turns in a different direction, the same way that a car would. Um, and here is an example on CalcPlot 3D. Uh, so the purple arrow is the unit tangent vector. That's the direction. The blue arrow is the unit normal vector. That's which way it's curving, it's turning. And um, then the red arrow is the unit binormal vector. So I, I, I want to do a really simple example here. In this example, the torsion is zero. You can see that the airplane is, it, it is this is only a yaw. It's only where the airplane is like turning like this. And you can see there that the the red arrow doesn't move at all. So this is a, it's just a really simple example where the torsion should be zero. I think I've come up with an example that's sufficiently complicated so that there will be some torsion. So um, here we go. I'm going to move the particle along the path. And what you're looking for is uh, the orientation of the red arrow changing. So we're kind of looking for this uh, roll behavior in the path. So here we go. So right off the bat, uh, you can see that. Let me get a little bit better view. Here we go. OK, so right off the bat, you can see. Look at that. Look at that. That is torsion right there. The path is twisting. The part of the airplane is kind of twisting, rolling as it flies. So, so torsion, 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 torsion. Okay, now right now it's really not, it's really not twisting along its path. And then as we come up here, now it starts twisting again. So torsion, 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 torsion. Okay. So that's the idea is when the path makes a kind of twisting behavior, that's the thing that we're trying to measure. How much twisting is there? The issue is the, the arrow that comes up out of the top of the airplane, it doesn't have to change only because of twisting, right? The arrow that goes out of the top of the airplane right here, it could also twist. So here's the airplane, here's the, the normal vector. If we pitch forwards, that would also cause the binormal vector to change. So really what we want is only the amount of twisting that comes from the wings of the airplane going up and down. So what I need to do is project how much the binormal vector is changing onto the normal vector. And that will isolate the, the twisting towards how much of it is happening in the kind of left and right way. I've, I've done a lot of silly dancing in this video. I hope that helps. <laughs> So we're trying to isolate the amount of change in the unit binormal vector that happens in the direction of the normal vector. Um, 
and and so this is a projection. So we calculate projections using dot products. Uh, so where we're at right now is you should calculate the rate of change of the unit binormal vector with respect to arc length and then project that onto n. So that's what I have written here. And this is great, except um, this is a little bit inconsistent with itself because usually the way that we imagine angles opening is angles open in the counterclockwise direction. So uh, the way that we've cooked up this formula here now doesn't follow that convention. We want um, angles, we want tau to give us a positive number when we're kind of rolling in the counterclockwise direction. So to compensate for that, we just put this negative in front of it. So the torsion, the concept here is you take the, some kind of rate of change of the unit binormal vector, you project that onto the normal vector, and then this negative is just there to make it uh, fit with our usual concept of how angles open. Um, so great, I mean, we, we've come up with a definition here that I think uh, is, is meaningful, except, wow, I do not want to calculate this thing. <laughs> Um, you know, usually binormal vectors are pretty complicated expressions because they result from this like taking derivatives and dividing by magnitudes and then taking cross products um, and then, then you know, projecting that onto n. Um, th there is an easier formula, though, so I'm going to present that now. This is the like conceptual way that we understand what torsion is, um, but, but let's get a like a more human formula that we can use to actually calculate um, uh, the numerical answer. So this is this is the formula for torsion, a kind of simplified uh, way to do the calculation. I I don't I I mean I might make a video in the future about the derivation of this formula. I don't really think that it's going to conceptually help you understand things. There is some content in it, um, but for now I just want to focus on the mechanics of how you use this formula. One thing that I will mention about it is that this uh, formula, there's a lot of history in it. And so sometimes you'll see the old notation for derivatives. You'll see dots above it for derivatives. And then also, you know, instead of the second derivative, they'll put two dots. Um, that that was actually how Isaac Newton wrote it. So, you know, don't, don't be too intimidated by that. Um, dot notation. Here it is. Basically what you do is you just take the original position function and you start taking derivatives and you put those uh, inside uh, the determinant of a big matrix. And then in the denominator, you have um, another cross product, the cross product of the velocity and the acceleration. Then you do the magnitude of that and you square it. Um, so you know, none of this is like a hard thing to do. There is just like kind of a lot of steps uh, involved in it. So, so let me jump in and do an example so we can see how these symbols push around. This is a pretty generic example, um, but I think that it's good for uh, watching the symbols push around. So I've given us a curve uh, in our problem. This is X and this is Y and this is Z. Uh, and then I'm just gonna use this formula here to calculate the torsion. So the first thing that I need to do is calculate a bunch of derivatives. So this is R. So I'm gonna start by calculating the derivative of R. So that's also V. And I get one, two T, 3t squared, and um, then r double prime, that's also the acceleration. I got a 0 to 6t, um, and then also I'm going to need these triple prime derivatives down here, so the triple, the third derivative, uh, we don't have a name for it, it I, I, it's called the jerk, um, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, so zero, zero, six. So now I basically just need to plug things into this formula and that'll crank out the answer. So you could be asked to calculate the torsion at any time, in which case I would have to use these actual quantities that I worked out and there would still be variables uh, for T, but, but we're not asked to. We're only asked to find the torsion at time one. So what we can do is as soon as you're done taking the derivatives, now just go ahead and plug in that time. That will greatly simplify things.
So I've done that. I'm done taking the derivative. So I plugged in time one, and I'm going to work out this fraction in separate parts. So I'm just working out the numerator. Um, so I'll just take all the derivatives. You know, I'm just following the formula. Um, now, so what's going to happen? Um, so I'm going to expand this by minor. So I'm going to cover up the first row in the first column and do this. So this is going to be two six zero six uh, times one minus remember it always goes plus minus plus and then now I have to cover up these so I get zero six zero six times two and then uh, cover up the last row in the last column so zero two zero zero times three so uh, in this first one here, I'm going to do 2 times 6 is 12. And then this 6 times 0 is going to be 0. So this is just 12 times 1, which is 12. Now, for all the other ones, I'm going to do this 0 times 0, and that 6 times 0. And then this 0 times 0, and that 2 times 0. So I don't want to get too off track here, but I will just mention this fact. If you have this kind of block of zeros in the bottom of a matrix and you're trying to calculate the determinant, that you should be able to see that you can get that just by multiplying all of these numbers. That's what I did, right? I did, I did one times two times six and that's what happens right here and the rest of them all just go away. Um, so that's kind of interesting um, if you want to explore that on your own. So now I'm doing the denominator. So the denominator is the, the square of the magnitude of a cross product. So let me just set up that cross product. I need to do the velocity. That's the first derivative. Uh, and the acceleration, that's the second derivative. So uh, here's the velocity cross the acceleration. So for V cross A, I got six, negative six, two. So what we need to do is calculate the square of the magnitude of V cross A. So all I need to do is kind of plug this into a, a, a magnitude of a vector formula. So I'm getting 36 plus 36 plus four, right? Because you just do the squares of all of the uh, components. So 40, 50, 60, 70, I'm getting 76 for this denominator. So we've done it. So in the end, tau is equal to 12 over 76. And this reduces to 3 over 19. Um, so that's it. We've calculated the torsion of this curve. It's uh, 3 over 19. You know, you just push the symbols around. You follow the little process. Um, just to kind of summarize what it is that we've done, here's the curve. I've plotted it in CalcPlot 3D. And you can see, uh, so the red arrow is the binormal vector. And as we move forwards in time, that binormal vector is changing, except some of the changing happens because the, the purple arrow there is twisting up, right? Can you see it twisting up? Sorry, the purple arrow is pitching up, um, but also the, the curve is also twisting. So we, what we've done is we've isolated the amount that the red arrow is changing, but only the part of it that comes from twisting, not the part of it that comes from, from changing the pitch.